And we're just going to cover a basic full part lock look. So Benita's going to use her left hand to push on my left shoulder. So it's left to left, just for this lock look. As she does, my left hand comes up, brushes my head. I take this straight arm lock here. She pulls her arm back. I go to the figure four here. She straightens her arm out. I go to the armpit arm lock here. And then I slide back to the thumb. Put both hands, uh, both thumbs on the back of the hand and then do the wrist lock. So that's quite an easy uh, lock flow. It makes a lot of sense, apart from the problem that she can punch me during these locks. So if I stand straight in front of her, she pushes, and I go here, she's gonna punch me in the face. If this is too low, she's gonna punch me in the face. Here, she's gonna punch me in the groin, or <laughs> in the face. And here, the mechanics of that wrist lock, turning, if I turn it in a big circle and around, it's gonna turn her into a punch. So I've always had a problem with lock flows, um, in that sense, because I think you're vulnerable to punches. So you've obviously got to position yourself so you're safer from punches and also hit your partner so that they're not focused on hitting you. So if Benita sticks on her glove, on her right hand, so a good way to test this is when you're doing the lock flows, she's going to try and punch me in the face as soon as the lock's applied. Not before, because she knows what's coming. So if she pushes and then punches, she's obviously going to get me. But if I go here and she tries to punch me, there's stuff in the way. She's, she's blocked, she's covered. So the first thing is to do is to move away from her right hand. So if you just move away a little bit. She's got her left leg forward, she pushes on the left hand. As I start to brush this away, rather than stay directly in front of her, I'm going to circle towards her back so that I'm away from the punch. Now obviously as I apply this, this would bend her forward so the punch is less, less likely. Now, she's probably had her elbow hyperextended there, so she's going to pull her arm back towards her, and that's when I go to the figure four. Now, in order to stay protected, I need to raise my elbow punch me. So my elbow's up. Now at the same time, I'd be trying to hit her with this elbow at the same time, so I block the punch and I hit her. If she extends her arm out, when I get to this one, I want to move a little bit behind her so it's harder for her to get me. She's got to reach around her body, she can't easily punch me in the groin. And the last one, when I go to the wrist lock, two thumbs on the back of the wrist, while I can stand here and let her smack me, I duck my head down and raise my elbow so that she's protected. So she's got one chance to punch me, and I've got one chance to apply the lock. But with good positioning, I'm out of the way of a lot of those punches. Let's go for it slow. So she pushes to the left, I brush it off, I move behind her here, so there's no punch there. As she comes in here, go slow, because I want to hit you, my elbow's up, so I'm protecting. Rather than doing the figure four where she bends her arm, I reach and grab my wrist and stay like this. I don't want to try and hide my head and also hit her with this elbow in there. She's going to straighten her arm out, so I circle away and downwards, so there's no punch there. And then I get to the wrist, step away, elbow up, Lock the punch. So that should make a little bit more sense because it's defending the punch while simultaneously applying the lock. And we've got four locks going on. The next thing we need to do, if you take that, please, is hit her in the spaces so that she's uh, not going to punch me or it'll make it easier, easier for me to apply the locks. So she pushes on my shoulder, I want to go here and then straight into the hammer because she's not going to let me fully lock her arm without first causing her some sort of discomfort and distracting her. So obviously if the pad wasn't there, that would be right to the bridge of the nose, smash and then this one would move in for the second one. So it makes it a little bit more practical, a little bit more functional. Left hand to left shoulder, brush away. Take the arm lock and move. Backhand hammer with the right hand. As she bends her arm to bring her arm back, I allow her to pull it back, grab my wrist, and then elbow to the pad. Now I've got to be careful on that one because I could hyperextend her shoulder here. So control this, don't, don't wrench her shoulder down to the ground, focus more on delivering the elbow. As she straightens her arm out to escape that, I arm put arm lock, so my hand goes over, grabs her wrist, clamp down, down, and then I'm gonna hammer. Just hold it a little bit there, that's better. So that'd be a hammer to the groin or a hammer to the face. As she starts to pull her hand back, both hands come up, and then I've got a hammer with the left, and then a hammer with the right to finish. So now, we're integrating hammer strikes into the lock flow. Obviously, it's unlikely you'd go through four locks in, in a row in a real situation. It would be push, wrench, hammer, and pretty much game over after that. Almost got her. Maybe I follow up with an elbow after that. So you'd only get one. But the idea of uh, lock flow is to teach you where the next lock is on the chain and how the human body works and um, mechanics of locks. She pushes, brush, careful with this arm wrench, hammer. She bends her arm. Elbow, she straightens her arm, circle behind, grab the wrist with both hands, drop your armpit on top, backhand hammer, grab hold of the wrist, both thumbs on the back of the wrist, 
fingers on the palm. Turn, but maybe you don't get that. So backhand hammer and then forehand hammer. The left, right. Okay. So I'm going from this wrist lock. It doesn't work. Hammer, hammer. In reality, wrist lock doesn't work. Hammer, hammer. Game over. Rather than trying to fiddle with this wrist lock while she's punching you. Um, better for me to go smack, so I'm protected against her punch, and then smack, smack. So that kind of hopefully makes sense that I'm positioning and striking so that she's not able to counter as effectively. Of course, there's counters to counter. One more time. Left hand, left shoulder. Left hand comes up. This would be an arm wrench, and I could rotate it downwards. Backhand hammer. She brings her arm back. Elbow. She straightens her arm out. Two hands on the wrist. Turn her elbow towards the ceiling. Clamp down with your armpit on top of that, and that would obviously be me dropping my body weight like this, which would be a broken arm for her. But if she's still there, backhand hammer. Two hands on the back, uh, two thumbs on the back of the hand. Lift your elbow in position. Left backhand hammer, right forehand hammer. Back to stance. So that's a little uh, lock flow in the Filipino martial arts using positioning and hammers.